Today we are going to discuss about CAP theorem and PAC ELC theorems in distributed systems. These are one of the most important and most common system design interview concepts. Whenever you are designing a system uh, in any kind of interview or in real life or in job, CAP theorem and PAC ELC, which are the more modern uh, further extensions of the CAP theorem, are possibly one of the major uh, things that you will be looking out for when you are designing distributed systems. So let's start by what is CAP theorem. So CAP theorem was formulated by Eric Brewer. It basically means C stands for consistency, A stands for availability, and P stands for partition tolerance. The theorem basically states that a distributed system can only achieve any of these two properties simultaneously, but not all three together. So which means you can either have consistency and availability, consistency and partition tolerance, or you can have availability and partition tolerance in one of in, in, in your distributed system. So first take a look, let's take a look at what is a distributed system. A distributed system is a collection of independent components which are spread across different networked com computers or servers, right? And they communicate by passing messages to operate as one unified system. So if we take a look at an illustration, so let's say that we have these four components and they are all connected over the network, right? And they are communicating with each other via messages. This entire thing is can be considered as a distributed system. So now if we look at each of the, uh, of the uh, properties in the CAP theorem, so let's start with consistency. Consistency states that a client must get the same data from any of the components. So if we consider that this is a distributed system and there are four components, if there is a client which is trying to uh, write data to say for example uh, one of the nodes or one of the components in the distributed system then once that node gets the data all the other nodes in the system will also get the same data either through replication or through some mechanism all of them will have the same view of the data so if another client tries to read the data then they can read they'll get the same data irrespective of their if they are getting the data from another node or another component in the distributed system. So that means that all the components in the system are consistent. It's a strongly consistent system. Next, let's take a look at availability. Availability means that client must get response even if one or more components are down, right? So again, let's take a look at the distributed system and say we have all the components having the same data, right? And at this point of time, if we consider that one of the component becomes unavailable, right? It goes down. If a client tries to read the data from any of the system, from the distributed system, from any of the components, they should get the same data, right? Uh, and then that is where we figure out, we provide routers and load balancers and uh, traffic shaping mechanisms, which can figure out which node is unavailable and the request will land to the respective component which is available. So which means that if the request by chance lands on the system on the component which is not available, then in that case you will not be able to get the data, right? So to make a system available, even if one of the components are down in the network, the client, if a client is trying to read the data from the distributed system as a whole, it should be able to get the, uh, the correct data. The third is partition tolerance. So this is one of the more confusing uh, properties. Uh, so partition tolerance primarily states that system must continue to work even if there is a network communication breakdown between one or more nodes. So partition tolerance is primarily about the network. If the network goes down, so which means that one of the nodes are not able to communicate, one or two, whichever uh, 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 network is, is impacted has gone down, the nodes that are connected to or the components that are connected to that network will not be able to get the request, right? So let's take a look at, so we have the distributed system, right? And they all have the same view of the data. Now let's say we have a network partition that happens on these two networks. So which means that these two networks are not operating. At this point of time, if a client 
tries to write data to say one of or to the distributed system or to one of the nodes in the system then this node gets updated this gets updated this gets updated but the top node or the top component that we see in this network is is not updated because both the networks that are connected to that component are are broken right are they those are not working so the request doesn't reach that node so that node has a stale view of the data so at this point of time if another client tries to read the data from this node it is going to get uh, the correct view of the data but if it tries to read from this node then it is going to get a stale version of the data however since it is a partition tolerant system it means that it is even if we are giving stale data there is some data that we are trying we are able to give right so that is partition tolerance so let's take a look at why do we say that a system can only have two of the three uh, properties cannot have all the three at the same time and we are going to run a cap proof so in cap we have consistency availability and partition tolerance so let's say we have one component c1 and another component c2 and they are connected over the network c1 and c2 they have the both both of them have the same view of the data and there is a client which uh, talks to both the uh, both the components in most of the cases in a distributed system you always have to expect that there are going to be network partitions it's very rare almost it's never going to happen where you are going to have a 100% working network throughout like at all the time right that is definitely not going to happen so if we consider that there is a network partition between c1 and c2 and at this point of time let's say that the client tries to write a new data to c1 and then c1 gets updated right now at, but since c1 and c2 the network between c1 and c2 is broken c2 doesn't get the request to write the data so it still has the stale view of the data now at this point of time if the client tries to read the data from c1 it will get the correct data but if it tries to read from c2 it will get an inconsistent data right which is a stale data but both the components are responding which means that we have a available system and uh, it is able to operate even if there is a partition in the network so that is partition tolerant but since c1 and c2 have two different uh, data which basically means that it is an inconsistent system so we have not been able to achieve consistency so that this distributed system is a ap it has availability and partition tolerance but it doesn't have consistency now let's take a look at say we have the same situation c1 and c2 uh, they both have the same view of the data and there is a network partition between c1 and c2 at this point of time if the client tries to write the data to c1 c1 sees that c2 is not available right or the network is not available to reach c2 the request cannot reach c2 so at that point of time c1 will also reject the request it will say that no i am i want to build consistency right so if i have to build consistency i cannot write the data and then let c2 continue to have the stale view of the data right so it rejects the request now at this point of time if the client tries to read from c1 it gets the correct data and if it tries to read from c2 it gets the correct data right so which means this system is a consistent system both c1 and c2 have the correct view of the data and since it is even with partition uh, in the network both the nodes are able to respond back so it is a partition tolerant system right we have been able to achieve partition tolerance but it is not available because when remember when the client tried to write the data to c1 that write request failed right so at that point of time the system the distributed system is unavailable to writes so it is not a 100% available system so here we have been able to achieve consistency and partition tolerance cnp but we haven't been able to achieve 100% availability right at least some part of the for example the write requests are failing right so now let's take a look at another scenario where we have 
uh, C1 and C2 and they are connected over the network and C1 and C2 have the same view of the data. Now the client uh, tries to read from both the C1 and C2 uh, but there is no partition okay and when the client writes to C1 so at that point of time C1 first checks with, is there the network working correctly or not yes the network is working correctly so it will first write itself it will update the data and then the request will also go to C2 C2 is also going to update the data right now at this point of time if the client tries to read from C1 it is going to get the right the correct data and if it reads from the from C2 it is going to get the correct data so both C1 and C2 is consistent so they have the consistent view of the data the latest data both of them none of our write requests or read requests all were successful so none of them were failing so it is completely available at this point of time the system has been able to achieve consistency and availability right so ca but now if we consider that there is a partition in the network then we are going back to one of the previous two cases right in one of the previous two cases there was a partition in the network and if there is a partition in the network we have to make the system partition tolerant and if you have to make the system partition tolerant either we have to get consistency if we get consistency then we lose availability or if we get availability we lose consistency so basically this proves that in cap theorem if you are going with cap theorem you can either achieve consistency availability consistency partition tolerance or availability partition tolerance but you cannot achieve all the three together in modern distributed systems which are highly scalable and all there is a new theorem which works further to cap theorem which is called a PAC ELC theorem. So PAC ELC theorem basically says that if you have a network partition right then you either have to achieve consistency or availability and if there is no network partition then still you will be you will have to consider latency and consistency. So which basically means that the left side is PAC which is the cap that we talked about and the right side is ELC that's the else part even if the system is running normally you still have to consider latency and consistency in the system right so what does the theorem state the theorem basically states this only like in case of a network partition in a distributed system one of availability and consistency has to be chosen uh, that is the cap theorem but even if uh, uh, when the systems are running normally that is the else case one has to still choose between latency and consistency right so that is the modern uh, modern uh, further extension to cap theorem which is the PAC ELC theorem now let's take a look at some of the modern database systems how they operate and what are the different variations of these properties that they have so let's start with partition tolerant and available systems uh, we have cassandra mongodb react they are all partition tolerant and available if you look at consistency and partition tolerant systems then we have many systems dynamodb cosmos db couchbase big table sql clusters right uh, postgresql so basically all the relational databases which try to achieve achieve high consistency like strong consistency they all mostly they try to achieve acid properties uh, they all uh, uh, go via the CP model like they try to achieve consistency and partition tolerance so all the MySQL all the uh, relational databases fall under this category then we have the EL case where uh, we have Cassandra DynamoDB Cosmos DB Riot and then the consistency case where we have DynamoDB Couchbase MongoDB MySQL clusters PostgreSQL so if you see DynamoDB Cassandra uh, so like these systems are there in multiple of these these categories right so the reason is like dynamodb cassandra rag they all have user adjustable setting uh, right of the lc uh, uh, values cosmos db for example has five selectable consistency levels that you can choose from uh, so basically it's a matter of trade off right uh, the system that you are designing at that point of time you have to think and you have to uh, see what you want to achieve do you want to achieve consistency do you want to achieve high availability do you want to achieve uh, partition tolerance even if there is no partition in the network is your system very high high le uh, latency ses sensitive system like it has to be very fast right so and based on the type of system based on the properties you are going to make trade-offs and based on the trade-offs your system is going to be uh, 
built right so that is cap and pseelc theorems uh, and these are very important concepts hopefully this was useful